Hey, in today's video, we're going to be looking at crop sensors and full frame sensors and whether we can actually tell the difference. There's loads of videos out there going through all the technical aspects between the two. But what we're going to look at is what the images actually look like. It's all good saying, well, with this sensor, you can do this, this and this. But we need to know what they actually look like and if we can tell the difference. Now, when I started out in photography, it was very important to have a full frame camera. There were things that full frame cameras back then could do that crop sensors couldn't. Shooting above ISO 400 was a nightmare on crop sensors. Any sort of autofocus and speed just wasn't built into the crop sensor cameras. There was also a problem with build quality in that the crop sensor cameras were built as a much more consumer level product. Whereas the full frame, the 1DS, the 1DS Mark II, they were built as professional rugged cameras built to do the job. Now 10, 15 years on this has changed a lot and the, you know, the, the best 7D from the Canon lineup, it's a fully weather sealed body, it's a brilliant piece of kit. Now in this particular video, I'm using slightly older cameras because I'm tight and I don't buy new kit all the time. So I've got a 70D and a 5DS and I know you're thinking there's a huge difference in resolution. So what I've done is I've made the resolution on both cameras exactly the same. So all we're looking at here is what the image looks like. Now I've done two different images. One's a tight close-up image, and one's taken from a bit more of a distance. I've used a Sigma Art 50mm 1.4 lens on both of them. I've popped one on the tripod, and then I've tried to match it as best as I can with the next shot. And we're just going to see whether we can spot the difference, or see which one we think looks best. And I'm also going to describe the differences as I see them. So to get this shot here on the screen, I've got 100 ISO, f10, and I'm shooting on the Sigma Art 50mm 1.4. I've got the light coming in from the left at a 45 degree angle, and it's coming through about a 120 centimeter softbox with a 500 watt light. So the first shot we have here is the, is the wider shot of the two. I say wider, not in terms of the lens being wider, but more in terms of how much we're getting into the frame. So I've got my lovely cheese plant standing on my painter stool, which I got for a bargain of two pounds at a charity shop. They thought I was mental buying it, but I really like it. So, off the bat, there's a slight difference in composition. I can't actually tell you which camera's which because I didn't realise it when I went into Lightroom that the it stripped that data when I re-exported them. Anyway, I worked out at the end and I'll let you know. So, I think the image on the left looks better. It has more depth to it, in my opinion. I'm probably going to prove myself to have no idea what I'm talking about with cameras when I find out which one's which. So, let's zoom in here and look at the detail. Now, this is the same lens, the same light, the only thing that changes is the sensor. I've also put in the same white balance, and I've shot raw and then just exported it as a JPEG. So there's been no processing, no colour profiles have been applied. This is just what the camera sees. I think the greens on the left are better. I think the tonality is slightly higher on the left. The gradation is slightly better. And there's slightly more detail in there. And I'm scrolling through because I've probably misfocused on one of them. But I do think the shot on the left does have more detail to it. For me, I would say that the full frame sensor is the camera on the left. I've just done a quick check and I was right. This is the full frame camera. But I think what's worth noting is if you're not looking at them side by side, this image is plenty good enough. Yes, it's a little bit hot on the plant pot. But a scrim could fix that. And the price difference in these two cameras is £1,600 or nearly $2,000, I think. I'm not very good at converting. I'm probably going to find out doing it completely wrong with the conversions. But it's a big price gap when you could just pop a scrim down to soften the light a little bit. And I think with the same lens on them, it's really hard to tell the difference. Now, this is from a distance. You, I wouldn't expect to see much of a difference here, but where I would expect to see a big difference is in these shots here. And these are taken much closer. So this is again the 50mm Sigma Art lens, which is a really affordable prime lens for the quality that you get. It's not affordable in terms of, let's go buy it right now, it's actually quite expensive, as are all photography things, but it's affordable in the grand scheme of lenses. Now, right off the bat, I think the right-hand side is the full frame, simply because it's got a bit more of a 3D look to it. I feel like the grapes at the back are thrown further out of focus and I'm not going to go into why that happens yet because that's a video all on its own, but I do think there's a slight more depth to the right hand side image. Now I shoot medium format quite often and this compared to this is a very different, uh, the two crop sensor and full frame, very slight different in depth. Put a 645 body on there, 
and the difference in depth is huge compared to full frame. I'm going to make a video as well about how to buy affordable full for, uh, affordable medium format because I think for three thousand pounds or three and a half thousand dollars, rather than a 5D Mark IV, you should buy a used Phase One if you're shooting in a studio or you're shooting still life or something where you're always lighting it because you do get a much nicer image. So looking at the grapes, oh, I think the one on the left's got slightly more detail. If we look at this grape here which is this one here. Let me see how we've got slightly more tonality there. But then maybe up here when the focus shifts. Pretty confident that the one on the right is the full frame sensor. That's just someone slamming a door. But if we look here at the fall off of focus, it is the right hand side has got a slightly nicer fall off and a slightly more extreme fall off if that's what we're saying nice is. But it's very hard to say. I don't think, you know, with a bit of cropping, better composition, the, the right hand side was composed better. That's the shot I took first. I tried to match it on the left hand side, I think. Let me go and have a look. Data, and this one here is the crop sensor, and this one here is the full frame. Now, I don't think I've done the shot justice with my composition. And I also don't think, I mean, these, these aren't award winning shots, they're just quick example shots, not edited, just the nearest light to me. Um, I've also lit it from, I can see a window is coming into play here. Anyway, that's irrelevant. What is relevant though, is that the difference is minuscule. Now I'm going to try and get hold of a phase one for the day. I'm going to try and get hold of a very cheap phase one or Hasselblad and then a very expensive one. I'm going to want to do a real big comparison of crop sensor, full frame, high resolution full frame, like the 5DS that I use, affordable medium format and may be able to afford to rent this one day at a thousand pounds a day sort of all single dancing medium format and i think it'll be really interesting to see where the difference is because i really don't believe there's a great difference between an entry-level dslr and a full-frame dslr but i do think there's a massive difference between a second hand oh I've got a text message a second hand phase one and a top of the line dslr okay let's look at these four images next to each other so I would say there's not a great deal of difference. I've slightly fudged up one of the test shots of the uh, full frame plant, which is the far right. But generally speaking, they are pretty much the same. There's, a, there's more depth to a full frame sensor. But if you've ever shot with medium format, you'll realize how minute the difference between these two sensors actually is. The jump up to a 645 sensor is huge in comparison to this. And the price hike for a second hand one is not that expensive. And I will do a video in the future about how to get into affordable medium formats because for some of us, it would be a better purchase option. It would have been for me, but I'm so deeply invested in Canon glass at the moment that it was to reproduce it, even on a budget, it was going to be expensive. Now, if you're already shooting crop sensor cameras and you're going to stick with them based on this, do let me know in the comments. If you're looking to upgrade to full frame and there's something in this video that's made you think this is a good idea, also let me know what your thought process is, what you're going to do, what you're shooting with. It's really interesting for me to see what everyone's enjoying shooting, what they like shooting with and how they base their camera purchases because mine are really based out of pure necessity and nothing else. But when you're doing it for a hobby or you're starting out, you have much more scope to you know, base your purchase on so many other things apart from this is what's expected of me in my profession. If there's something you'd like me to cover, DM me on Instagram or pop a comment below the video and I'll try and get something sorted out for that. I've got loads of content planned. I've already got my next 30 videos planned and some of them part shot, which I'm, I'm not normally this organized, but there we go. Thank you very much for watching again and I'll see you all tomorrow.